See those little black logs floating in the canal? Yeah, those aren't logs. They're alligators. Welcome to Louisiana, where every waterway is basically a gator hangout. In the 20th century, alligators in Louisiana were nearly hunted to extinction because their hides were all the rage in luxury goods. But thanks to some solid management policies in the 70s and 80s, the gator population made a serious comeback. Now, Louisiana boasts around 2 million wild alligators, with estimates possibly hitting the 3 million mark. That's on par with Florida's gator count. So if you're on a mission to see an alligator, Louisiana is pretty much your ultimate destination. They're everywhere, just living their best gator lives. Our first stop on our gator quest is at Cajun Pride Swamp Tours. Located just 27 miles from downtown New Orleans, we dove into the heart of the Manchek Swamp. Now, Cajun Pride owns this private wildlife refuge where no fishing or hunting is allowed, which means the animals are totally chill with the tour boats. Seriously, the gators are like, oh, look, more humans, whatever. Even before the tour started, we saw gators just hanging out around the boat. It's like Gator Central here. Our captain was basically a Wikipedia of gator knowledge. Let's say about 11 or 12 inches right there. Yeah. All right, so it's about 11 or 12 inches. This alligator was close to about 11 to 12 foot long. All right, so every inch is about a foot. So you look at these alligators out here, most of them are going to have about five to six inches from in between. In between the nostrils, in between the nostrils. Suddenly, he stops the boat, and the alligators start coming over like they're waiting for a show. And then the captain jumps out onto the platform to feed them, which was both exciting and slightly terrifying. Normally feeding wild alligators is a big no-no because they start to think humans equal food. But here, it's controlled. These gators aren't going anywhere. They're basically tour employees at this point. The smaller gators showed up first, like they were the warm-up act, and then the big boys started rolling in. We kept moving and these gators followed us the whole way. It's kind of like having a gator parade. Fun fact, the word alligator comes from the Spanish for el legato, which means big lizard. They grow about a foot a year for the first five to six years, then slow down a bit but keep growing for their whole lives. The captain even showed us a baby alligator from their stock and you could hold it if you wanted to. 
but like with extreme care. The tour was about an hour and a half to two hours long, and it was awesome. I totally recommend Cajun Pride Swamp Tours. We had a blast, and the alligators were there from the very beginning to the very end. Now, let's talk about Dr. Wagner's Honey Island Swamp Tour. If you're heading to New Orleans, this is one of those must-do things that everyone will tell you about. They've been at it since 1982, so it's safe to say they know a thing or two about showing people around the swamps. First off, Honey Island Swamp is just a quick 50-minute drive from downtown New Orleans. Super convenient, right? This place is massive like 70,000 acres of massive. We're talking seven miles wide and 20 miles long, nestled snugly between the east and west Pearl River. These rivers start all the way up in central Mississippi and wind their way down for 444 miles until they hit the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty epic journey for a river if you ask me. Now Honey Island Swamp Tours captains are just as knowledgeable, if not as brave, as Cajun Pride. So I'll let him explain the rest to you. This is the West Pearl River, which originates in Philadelphia, Mississippi, which is about 450 miles north of where we are right now. It is a rain-fed river. All the water in this river came from the rain somewhere in Mississippi. It can rain here in Louisiana every day, all day for a year, and this river won't rise one inch. But if Mississippi gets a good hard rain overnight, we've seen this river come up three to four feet overnight. It all depends on how much rain they get. Very, very low right now. It's usually about 10 to 11 feet deep. It's probably five feet right now. Oh, wow. Now let's get on to the main event. Alligators. These guys are the real stars of the swamp. You pretty much can't throw a rock without hitting an alligator here. Though please don't throw rocks at alligators. Right from the start of the tour, you're almost guaranteed to see them. As the boat ventures deeper into the bayou, the alligator sightings just keep coming. It's like an alligator buffet for the eyes. Dr. Wagner's Honey Island Swamp Tour is no joke when they say you'll see alligators. If you got a bucket list item for seeing these creatures in the wild, this tour will check that box and then some. Whether you're a hardcore nature enthusiast or just looking for a cool and unique adventure, this tour gives you an up close and personal look at the wild, vibrant ecosystems of the Louisiana swamp. Trust me, it's an experience you won't forget. If you want to hear the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster, wait to the very end of the episode and I'll tell it to you. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has this whole system where they manage alligators as a commercial renewable resource. It's like farming, but with alligators. There are almost a million of these scaly guys on farms across the state. Back in 1986, the department started this alligator ranching program to help the wild population grow. Farmers with the right licenses can collect alligator eggs from private lands. Once the little alligators hatch, they get to hang out in secure facilities until they're about three to five feet long. In nature, only about 15% of alligators make it to that size because predators are a thing. But let's listen to the alligator farmer explain it better. Okay, out there trying to eat them, only about six or eight out of every 100 baby alligators out in the wild actually even make it to a four foot alligator due to all those predators. 
But with us going out, collecting the eggs, bringing them back, hatch from here, we have a 90% success rate. Now. Instigator Ranch, this cool place owned by John Price, is where conservation, education, and entertainment all come together in a big, scaly, alligator-filled package. John and his family have been running the ranch since 2001 with this awesome mission to teach people how alligators have managed to thrive through sustainable conservation efforts. And let me tell you, these aren't your run-of-the-mill tours. They're like the ultimate gator experience for anyone and everyone. From Baton Rouge to Biloxi, Instigator Ranch is known as the most informative and interactive alligator tour you can find. We're talking about seeing hundreds of alligators, from tiny babies to massive eight-footers. The alligators at Instigator Ranch have a pretty sweet setup. They live in these large barns with concrete pens, which sounds super cozy for a gator. Their main food is something called alligator chow, which is basically a pellet made from the waste from the fishing industry. It's like recycling, but for gator food. And get this, they also get marshmallows as a treat sometimes. Yeah, you heard that right, marshmallows. It's like the instigator version of giving your dog a cookie. All right, so get this. Instigator Ranch has a real live Nile crocodile. Yeah, that's right, a crocodile. These guys are originally from freshwater habitats in Africa. Now an adult male Nile crocodile is usually between 11 feet to 16 feet long and they can weigh anywhere from 500 to 1600 pounds. But wait, it gets crazier. Some of these crocs can go over 20 feet long and weigh over 2000 pounds. They're the largest predators in Africa and are considered the second largest reptiles in the entire world right after the saltwater crocodile. So if you're looking to see something really impressive, Instigator Ranch has got you covered. So the last part of the Instigator Ranch tour is all about gator anatomy and behavior. I think I'll let the alligator farmer take it from here. Now most people say, and by the way, I'm putting him on the ground, just if he comes up to you guys, don't try to reach down and pick him up because he can jump up and hit you in the face. Now, most people say that alligators are mean and aggressive, but they actually are not. They actually are defensive. Most of the time, they're just gonna try to get away from you. But of course, if you agitate them, which is pretty much everything that we've been doing so far, they do have a tendency to wanna to get mad at you. But really, they're all about flight instead of fight. Now, believe it or not, alligators actually can run. They can get up to about 10 to 12 miles an hour on land. About as fast a grown man or woman can run. But in the water, they can actually get up to about 20 miles an hour. So they can actually outswim any Olympic swimmer, hands down. As I mentioned earlier, 10% of farm-raised alligators are released back into the wild to help out Louisiana's already booming alligator population. The rest, well, they get harvested for their leather. And you can snag yourself an alligator wallet or belt right at Instigator Ranch. Plus, the meat is sold on the open market. Next up, I'm taking you to one of the best spots in New Orleans to try alligator for yourself. Gator is on many menus throughout the city. Yes, we really do eat alligator in New Orleans. Walk-Owns is hands down one of my favorite restaurants. The food is always good and the service is some of the best you'll find anywhere. Seriously, I've never had a bad meal here. It all started with two walk-on members of the LSU basketball team who opened the first location in 2003, right next to the legendary Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Since then, it has blown up to over 100 locations in more than 15 states. Now, alligator meat is like eating chicken nuggets of the swamp. Sure, you usually see it as fried gator nuggets, but you can actually find it in all sorts of dishes if you're feeling adventurous. Most of the alligator meat you're going to find in Louisiana restaurants is from local gator farms. So when you're munching on gator in New Orleans, you're basically eating locally sourced swamp chicken. And guess what? It's not just tasty, it's also low in fat and cholesterol and packed with protein. Plus, the alligator industry rakes in hundreds of millions of dollars for the state every year. So eating gator is practically an act of civic duty. Buckle up for a wild ride through Avery Island's jungle gardens, 
where our story kicks off with Edward Avery McElhenney, the Arctic explorer who decided to pivot from ice to alligators. Yep, you heard that right. McElhenney was all about preserving nature, and his family estate on Avery Island is now a private wildlife refuge. Think of it like Jurassic Park, but you know, with fewer dinosaurs and more birds, even though birds are dinosaurs. So, McElhenney wasn't just saving birds, though he did create a sanctuary in the Louisiana marshlands for them. He also had a knack for gardening. He brought in all these exotic plants, turning jungle gardens into this 170-acre botanical wonderland. It's like a nature's lover fever dream, bursting with biodiversity and all that good stuff. Now, let's talk logistics. If you're planning to visit, especially in the warmer months, be prepared to fight off mosquitoes. These tiny annoying little vampires are everywhere. So don't forget to douse yourself in mosquito repellent before diving into the lush greenery. But the real star of the show? Stop three, the alligator lagoons. Picture this, three ponds filled with alligators. You might only see one or two, but trust me, they're there, lurking. And remember, it's the ones you don't see that are the real troublemakers. Edward McElhenney wasn't just any alligator enthusiast. He literally wrote the book on them, The Alligator's Life History in 1935. Many of the alligators in these lagoons were born right here, while others are from alligator farms. And get this, McElhenney holds the record for shooting the longest American alligator, a whopping 19 feet 2 inches, back in 1890. This wasn't just any random encounter, it happened during a duck hunt, because why not mix things up a bit? So, as you wander through jungle gardens, marvel at McElhaney's legacy. His work on alligator biology, from their reproduction habits to their colossal sizes, is the reason we know so much about these creatures today. Plus, it gives you a fun fact to impress your friends with, that McElhaney once took down a 19-foot gator during a duck hunt. How's that for a legacy? The Audubon Zoo is part of the Audubon Nature Institute. This place is pretty big, like 58 acres big, and it's got over 2,000 animals just hanging out, living their best lives. The zoo is named after John James Audubon, the artist and naturalist who lived in New Orleans way back in 1821. Fun fact, the site has been showing off animals since the 1884 World Cotton Centennial Exhibition, which was basically a world's fair. But the zoo as we know it now didn't really come together until the early 20th century, so it's got some history and a ton of cool animals to check out. The Louisiana Swamp is this super cool outdoor exhibit where you can see a bunch of animals that are native to southern Louisiana. The biggest stars of the exhibit? The alligators, of course. There are three places you can view the gators here. One is a large lagoon located near the entrance to the exhibit where you can see several mid-sized adults. The second is near the back where a huge alligator lives. The third is an air-conditioned building where you can sit down and relax for a while as you check out this very rare white alligator. It is absolutely breathtaking. And I mean, people describe it as ethereal, ghostly, and just downright beautiful. This gator has this amazing translucent white skin and deep blue eyes with a little splash of pigmentation here and there. Now this condition is super rare and it should not be confused with albinism. Albinos have pink eyes and no pigmentation. White alligators are very rare because their lack of protective camouflage makes them easy pickings for predators when they're very young. So if you ever see a white alligator in the wild, consider yourself incredibly lucky. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to hear me tell the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster, hold still until after these endings. If you haven't seen our last video, The Best of Birmingham, Alabama, I'll leave a link for you in the descriptions. You don't want to miss a second of the excitement. 
So this is your time to hit that subscription button. Hit the like button, comment, follow, do all that YouTube stuff. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections. Join me, if you would, as we embark on a journey into the heart of the Honey Island Swamp, which is basically the Louisiana version of Jumanji. This place is a wild, untamed expanse filled with alligators, cottonmouths, and garfish. Like someone took a bayou and said, what if we made it extra dangerous? So picture this, a swamp that stretches over 20 miles long and nearly 7 miles across. It's massive and it's mysterious and within its murky depths looks a legend. Something locals call the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Now if you're thinking, oh great, another Bigfoot story? Hold on to your airboats because this one's got a spicy Cajun twist. Our monster is seven feet tall, covered in matted gray hair, and has fiery red eyes. Imagine if a swamp had a bad hair day and an even worse attitude. Locals have been talking about this creature since the early 1960s describing it with a stench that could make a skunk blush. But wait, there's more. This tale isn't just about some random monster. It's woven into Cajun and Native American folklore. We're talking about the Latichi, a human-like being raised by alligators after being abandoned in the swamp. Yeah, it's like the Jungle Book, but instead of wolves, it's gators. And instead of seeing animals, it's more about respect for nature and tribal values. Flash forward to 1963, enter Harlan Ford and Billy Mills, our unwitting heroes. They're flying over this uninhabited swamp in a small plane when they spot something weird, a campsite in the middle of nowhere. So naturally they decide to check it out. And what do they find? Not just a campsite, but a large, hairy, ape-like creature that emerges from the bush, looks them dead in the eyes, and then just vanishes in the swamp, you know casual. Fast forward again to 1974. Ford and Mills are hunting in the same area when they come across a gruesome scene. Dead feral hogs with their throats ripped out and wouldn't you know it, the same kind of human-like footprints they saw a decade earlier. They call in the Louisiana Wildlife and Fishery officers who take plaster castings of the footprints. The experts at LSU are like, yep, Whatever made these is seven feet tall and weighs between 300 to 350 pounds. So basically the size of a linebacker, but hairier and smellier, if that's possible. Now you might be thinking, sure, but these guys could just be making it up. But here's the thing, Harlan Ford and Billy Mills are local legends in their own right. Known for being super credible and not the kind of guys to make up stories. They work for the FAA where lying or being unstable could cost you your job. Then there's Ted Williams. This guy not only claimed to have seen the monsters multiple times, but he believed there were several of them. He even said, I could have taken them down, but I held back because they never seemed to pose a threat to me. Talk about confidence. But plot twist, Ted Williams goes missing one day after setting trot lines in the swamp. Spooky, right? And if you think that's the end, think again. We got more spine chilling encounters, like mysterious claw marks 10 feet up on a hunter's camp stilts, hair samples that don't match any known species, and sightings of a six foot tall naked hairy man during squirrel hunts. There are even reports of feral hogs placed high in tree forks, like some kind of twisted scarecrow setup. As the story spreads, more people come forward with their own sightings and the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster grows. Some say it's folklore, but the consistency in eyewitness testimonies keeps the mystery alive. So here we are, navigating the uncharted waters of the Honey Island Swamp, where the line between myth and reality blur. Whether the Honey Island Swamp Monster is a real cryptid or just a really elaborate campfire story, its legend urges us to keep exploring and questioning the unknown. And who knows, Maybe one day we'll catch a glimpse of the extraordinary lurking in this untouched wilderness.